One technique that you will very quickly need to know how to use is the ability to write for multiple voices. Now when we say multiple voices, what we mean is to have more than one independent line of music on a single stave. So for example, if I was going to write, um, as I'm going to do, uh, a separate clarinet counter melody for this, um, this is obviously uh, when the saints go marching in, but I'm going to write a wee counter melody for it as a second clarinet part on the same stave as the first clarinet part. If I was just going to do it all as the exact same rhythm, then I could just add the notes to the stems here and do it as block chords. But using multiple voices gives you the option of writing completely independent lines of music. So that's what we're going to do. The voices are accessed from the bottom of a numeric keypad on screen here. You'll notice if I select a note, it turns blue and all the selections that we make are all blue because we are all these selections are all in voice one. You should always have a voice one. You should never start with any other voice. Always start with voice one. However, I can, if I want, select voice two, which turns the button green and any notes or any um, anything really that I put into voice two will show up as green when it's selected. Voice 3 will show up as orange, voice 4 as pink. So how do we do it? Well, you just select, it's very straightforward, select the voice you want to use, and then you input the notes in exactly the same way as you did before. So for example, I'm going to start putting notes in, so I'll start with a one beat rest in voice 2, so they're green. I get my ghost note in the same way as usual, put it there, and you see it, the bar has now been filled up with the rest of the rests because I haven't put any notes in yet. Also notice that the stems have flipped so the stems for voice one now point up the way as they should do. So let's put some notes in. I'm going to do it all with the mouse so you can see exactly what I'm doing. So, so far that was all very straightforward. You can see it's very it's exactly the same way as you would put notes in any other way. But these are all the same rhythm as the ones above. That's purely because that's what I've decided to do. Here, for example, if I decide to put another crotchet in there, it will carry on and let me put these notes in in whatever way I want. So I'm putting them in again, as I said, using the mouse. So you can see exactly what I'm doing. Put two beat rest in there after that, and then a, a one beat rest, and then a two beat note, and you carry on in exactly the same way until your music is complete. So, why you may ask, do I have a piano part here ready to put notes in? And I've already explained that you can use this here. Well, you have the option of using up to four voices, as I've said. And a common mistake that many people think, as you're thinking of the piano, you'd put voice one notes up at the top here, voice two there, voice three there, and voice four there. Let me show you what happens if you do that. I'm just going to put a wee um, piano part just for these two bars here. Okay, voice one, escape out of that, very nice and very straightforward. Voice two now, put voice two here. Um, let's have another one of those. It's all well and good, yeah? But what happens if I now use voice three for the tenor link? Well, let's try it. Okay, Evans Orange, and I'll do my notes uh, here. Now, immediately you can see that a random rest has started to appear. What's that all about? Okay, maybe it'll go away if I try doing my bass line with voice four. Let's try that. So, voice four. Oh, there's another random rest. What's going on? Well, that's the problem that many people have is these random rests here. You can discover what's going wrong by simply selecting the bar and you'll see voice 3 is orange, voice 4 is pink. That's blue which means that that's voice 1. Remember up here I said you should always have a voice 1. 
there's where your voice one is. So you should have voice one, voice two, and on the left hand, voice one, voice two. Remember, Sibelius treats the two lines of the piano as two separate instruments. So voice one, voice two, voice one, voice two. If you really wanted to have a voice three and voice four on a single stave, you do run into problems because let me show you, if I select, for example, voice three, and try and put a three beat note, let's say there, See the stems are all getting crossed up? It just causes confusion. On bars like that, that's okay. But then if I try and do a voice four, escape out of that. Let's do a voice four. Um, it just becomes messy and horrible. So you tend to stick, I, I personally tend to stick to no more than two voices per stave. Um, simply for clarity so that it makes it easier to read the music when the time comes. Now lastly I did mention that you can use any note input method for putting in your notes once you've decided what voice you're going to use and that includes flexi time which we've covered earlier in another video. There is one wee thing that you have to be aware of though for flexi time and that is in the flexi time options. Let me do that, it's Control shift o as a shortcut you recognise this from when you set up your flex time in the first place. And it's this area here, the voices. By default, Sibelius is set to record into multiple voices. Now, that means that Sibelius will decide what should go into voice 1, what should go into voice 2, etc. It just causes problems sometimes, to be honest. So my personal preference is always to undo that, and then I'll decide which voice I'm going to use. I would always have a voice 1, but you can just as easily tell it I'm going to record straight into voice 2 and start recording from wherever you want and it will record into voice 2 immediately for you. So that's using multiple voices in Sibelius. It's a skill that you will use if you write for drums or if you write for piano or in the case of something like this if you're writing for um, like a theatre orchestra where very often you have two lines on the one stave. Um, there's, there's all sorts of different ways you'll end up using it.